In this video, I want to highlight the origins and beginnings of Western philosophy by distinguishing it from mythology and religion, both of which are contemporary ways of knowing the world in ancient Greek society, the very same Greek society out of which philosophy itself emerges. Mythology makes sense of the world through stories. So for the ancient Greeks, the stories of the Iliad and the Odyssey give them a touchstone to knowing themselves and their culture and their society. Now what's interesting about these stories is that even though it is said that Homer is the author of them, Homer himself doesn't take credit for knowledge of the events entailed in the stories. He says that the muses inspired in him these stories. And so the model of knowledge here is that the muses have access to reality and knowledge of reality, in particular the uh, reality of the events of the Trojan War and Odysseus' struggle to get home. And the muses then pass this on through a type of supernatural revelation to Homer. And then these stories get passed down over time. The important point here is that the individual doesn't have access to this information himself. It's going to come through the stories, which itself comes through a process of revelation. So what we've got here is a kind of an odd mix of mythology and revelatory knowledge. So in the model of knowledge through religious revelation, uh, the model is going to look much the same way. Here we have the um, idea that God knows things about ultimate reality and God will pass them on to certain prophets. So take, for example, uh, God revealing to Moses the creation stories of how the universe came to be, or the stories of how to behave through the commandments that were revealed to him on Mount Sinai, or even Paul's revelation on the road to Damascus. All of this knowledge comes through the process of revelation, which is a type of supernatural intervention. And that's how the individual would know this. It would either be passed down orally or written down. The important point here is that the individual themselves doesn't have access to this knowledge. They themselves are limited in their knowledge and can only know about certain things within this model if it came through divine intervention. So now let's take a look at Thales. Thales is a pre-Socratic philosopher, said to be the first philosopher in the Western tradition. He said he um, predicts a solar eclipse that occurs in 585 BCE. So Thales is around in the 6th century BCE. That's, that's chronologically before Socrates. Thales lives on the eastern coast of present-day Turkey. So he's a Milesian philosopher, but he's still a Greek. What's notable about Thales is really more about what he doesn't say than what he actually says. Thales doesn't attribute his knowledge of reality to any supernatural entity or divine inspiration. So when Thales says that all is water, he's referring to what the Greeks understand as a, the arche, the fundamental substance of reality or the origin of reality or the underlying principle of reality. Thales doesn't say that this knowledge comes from the muses or the gods or any supernatural intervention. Thales is simply looking at the world, making observations about it, and noting particular patterns, recurring themes, or perhaps a recurring element in it all. And so in that way, Thales is using empirical knowledge or empirical reasoning, which is using knowledge gained through the senses, and rational knowledge or rational reasoning, which uses logic and logical inference to make claims about the world. So what's important here to note about Thales is that Thales is, as the individual, the source and authority of his claims about reality, not the muses, not the gods. And this new model of knowledge gets known as philosophy. And Thales' particular style of philosophy gets known as natural philosophy, which we would now simply call science. And so this model of knowledge marks something new in Western culture, and this is the beginning of Western philosophy.